and I'm just putting the tiniest little bit of pink down the bottom of the sky here the sky area and I'm going to pick up a little more white again a bit of Prussian blue whenever you wash your brush always squeeze the turps out of it a little bit of medium and I'm going to run this upper sky in and bring it down gently gently into this pink here I'm going to go over to a softer brush same size brush but just a little softer so that we get a better coverage the hard brush that I was using there is not it's giving a little bit of a scratchy effect use that away gently down the bottom here if you want to put a few clouds in then now is the time to run them in get a nice highlight on top of the clouds infuse the the paint away underneath get a nice soft effect that's about all we need I'm going to use a little bit of yellow ochre and white but we'll basically just get rid of this blue again I'll pick up a tiny bit of yellow ochre and white and we'll run the foreground area in a little bit of medium and we'll run this ground area in here now I'm only putting this on very very thin and get it very light in the distance get this burnt sienna in the foreground here just use little short strokes is much better than big long ones put this paint up the top out of the way for the moment we may use it later and I'm going to take a little bit of that blue again and a bit more red in it and we'll just add a little more white in that and I'm going to run these hills in in that purpley color uh, horizon line and then we'll come back to this main hill here we'll just make that just take a tiny bit darker there that's about all you need and pick up a little bit of orange and a little Payne's grey and uh, I'm going to run these little bushes in along here we only need them about an inch or so high, a couple of centimetres high at the maximum. Then I'm coming back with a little yellow green to highlight it. And we'll run a few little trunks up. There's no need to stick with yellow green. You can run a little bit in, in places with a, a little bit of pink or uh, a little bit of yellow ochre. Uh, and white, there's a little yellow ochre and white and the trunks up now, I'm going to just scratch them in like so uh, this technique of course doesn't work when the colour is pale because you're scratching it back to the white paint it certainly doesn't work when it's a light colour you can't see it and at the bottom, the extreme bottom here we're going to pick up the bottom of that uh, foliage and just create the tiniest little bit of shadow and then I'm going to come back with a bit of this lemon yellow again and flick up a bit of grass here and we're picking up a little bit of green bringing a bit of the green down here yellow green as we come forward and uh, deliberately turn it towards a green a little bit of Australian red gold or we have a little bit on the palette I'm going to put a building in over here so we'll we'll put in three three vertical lines one two three this one is a little shorter than these two here 
between these two here we'll just run a little uh, bit of a roof up there and run the top of the roof away here down to that other one. Um, if the paint is a bit thick under there um, it's advisable to just take off the worst of the paint a little bit of burnt sienna for the end here and we'll just take that down a little bit more there to get a textured effect we could use a little bit of this pink here down the end we can run some lines down there as if there were some boards there yellow ochre and white in the front and we could use a little burnt sienna to give the shade the shading effect underneath the the roof if there's a little bit too much just take it off uh, or we could use a tiny bit of burnt sienna for the roof as long as it's kept light so we'll run this roof down here we'll overlap that roof a tiny bit that wall a tiny bit and just bring it out gently 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 like so and we can run a little white along this leading edge here a little bit in the roof itself a little bit of highlight back this way and we've got it let's make that fractionally darker in here and we can use a little bit of burnt umber for the doorway and a couple of windows in here you could put a window in the end of the building if you want to if you feel you need to we can put a, a chimney up here also with a little highlight on it a tiny bit of shadow running away chimney a little darker and we'll run some smoke up here and just fuse it away gently with your finger so we need now the bottom of the building well just get that into perspective by from this corner here it goes up slightly and I'm going to use a little bit of really dark paint along here and remember with grass it always has a little bit of shadow around it I'll just pull that away gently down here gently gently run that away there and we could put a bit of a windmill in and we'll put a head on it here a bit of a tail here a circle here where the blades are going to go and the actual blades they all go towards this center axle so we slope the blades towards that center axle then we'll come back and highlight that a little bit about all we need a few cross pieces on this and we could run a few highlighted cross pieces actual tank we could put a tank in about here and we'll highlight that on the left hand side and the the tank curves up at the top it gets straight at the horizon line and then it curves down we'll just put a couple of legs underneath it here and a 
a bit of grass around it and that's about all we need now down the bottom here we need to shade this corner a little bit make it a little darker a little bit of a track coming in here on the from the building as you come forward you make the little track a little darker gently gently work that in there and run some grass creep up the side of that little track a little bit of shadow coming across and come over here and gently gently run this track up in here rubbish coming over the track if you want it uh, rocks in put a little more burnt umber there and we'll put a few rocks in here as you go back they get smaller and uh, we'll highlight them a tiny bit very easy and then come back in here to a little bit of orange and a little bit of Payne's grey only a bit lighter come back in here and get some grass up around them the light green around it we're picking up a little bit of the the rock there which is shading it anyway lightish green and we could make it just a little bit darker here a little bit of burnt sienna we'll just take a little bit of red and white uh, we'll just work up this track a little bit more get it just a little bit paler Bling. gently gently come down here a little bit a little bit more green around this edge here stand out a tiny bit straight on the front of the building um, we could put a post in here a couple of posts Just very gently and a bit of a rail across here and a tiny bit of this pink to highlight that that's about all we need a pipe across here uh, to the tank from the windmill and again highlight that running into the tank and we just cut the um, we can just fuse this guy away a tiny bit more here just to blend it away be very careful when you come back in a painting like this that you don't touch anything within the painting because that would make a terrible mess come back to these clouds and just push them a tiny bit more but I think generally speaking um, they're satisfactory or cloud formation in under here you could run even a little bit of pink into that it sometimes looks very effective we could run away a couple of little saplings like so not really necessary but run those away another little guy in here perhaps a little bit of highlight on that a little bit of highlight on this guy a really easy little painting for you to have a go at I suggest you get your brushes out and have a go